Hey, everybody. Welcome, welcome. Glad you guys could join me on a Sunday. Hope everybody do, is doing well. Can you guys hear me, first of all? Uh, let's see. All right, there we are. Hello, hello. <laughs> Melissa, good to see you. Josh, welcome. All right, thank you. Yes, uh, that's great. You guys can hear me. Ryan, Mark, thank you for joining me on a Sunday. Um, uh, today, I was actually doing some hydroponic work. So I, I you know, I thought I'll just uh, come on and say hello and maybe talk about hydroponic. Uh, I have a new project uh, that I'm working on right now in my grow tent. Um, so for the past few months, it was it was just too hot. I couldn't do anything in the in the in the garage because um, uh, the temperature literally exceeds a hundred degrees Fahrenheit in the in the afternoon when the sun is beating down and you know and stuff like that. We're in Texas, so it gets really hot. So um, for the past few months, I, I cleaned up my tent, I cleaned up my systems, and I just left it there. I, you know, there's nothing I could do. Uh, but uh, today, I started to do some um, a setup for my Ar Armenian cucumbers. Uh, if you guys follow me on Instagram, you know how much I love Armenian cucumbers. And uh, those things are, are, you know, they, they love to grow in the heat. So they're the great summer vegetable to grow. Um, and so I figured, you know what? The tent is, is, uh, is a little hot right now. And since Armenian cucumbers, uh, they enjoy the heat so much, why not set it up and, and, uh, and try to grow some uh, in my hydroponic setup? So this is the first time I've ever tried Armenian cucumbers in hydroponic. And, and the reason why I usually don't grow Armenian cucumbers in hydroponic is because they require pollination. So what that means is, you know, when you grow it outside, you have the bees and stuff like that to do the pollination for you. But, you know, since I'm going to do it inside, there's no bees and all that. So I'm going to have to do the pollination, which is um, it's going to be a challenge once, you know, things are grown everywhere. But uh, I think it's going to be fun. Um, I love Armenian cu cucumbers. They're just amazing uh, uh, you know, uh, cucumber plants. Uh, they're actually not cucumber. They're they're more of, of a melon, but uh, because they they look the inside look just like a cucumber, and it does taste like a cucumber, so that's why they call it Armenian cucumbers. But it's in the melon family. So uh, yeah, guys, uh, uh, is anyone doing hydroponic right now? That that'd be that'd be good to know. Uh, let's see if I can go to the comment and see if you guys have any questions. Oh yeah, raw. The, it's too hot right now. All your pep, your, your flowers are dropping, and the peppers. Yes, uh, it, it, heat is a big problem when you're growing uh, peppers, uh, especially the uh, the Chinense variety. They they're very sensitive when it comes to extreme heat. Um, a way to um, you know kind of like uh, work work with it is that if you have a drip irrigation system going. Uh, it helps keep cool the roots down, you know, with the constant drip of water uh, without allowing the, the soil to dry quickly. And that does help a little bit to eliminate a lot of the flower drop. So uh, try to keep the soil, uh, you know, there's keep moisture in the soil, because what happens is if it's too hot, the soil dries up, it evaporates everything. And then the dry, the soil becomes super, super dry. And when the soil is super dry, it also kills all of the bacteria that are beneficial to the plant in there. So, you know, it, it causes all kinds of problems. It causes stress at the root level because the plant is not able to take up um, nutrients because, you know, the bacteria are, are gone. And also because it's so dry that, you know, there's stress, you know, the, the, the roots needs to... Um, to be hydrated, so they start to stress. So that's why they drop flowers. So if you have a, you know, if you have shade cloth, that would work great uh, to combat the heat. Uh, also, if you can have a drip irrigation system set up so that it can run and uh, you know drip around the soil and keep moisture there, that also helps with uh, uh, prevent flowers from dropping. So um, yeah, try those. <laughs> or you can, or you can do it like me, where you grow it in in uh, in in pots you know, like five gallon pots 
and then you can move it. You know, that's what I do. I move my plants outside, uh, outside of, the, you know, out of the sun into a shaded area when it gets too hot. And then that, that really, really helps. And they've grown amazing right now, guys. I need to do a, the next update because uh, my potted plants are just looking amazing. Okay, so uh, let's see what else I have here. Oh, bow, boughs grow. You have mini cracky going on in the basement. That's awesome. <laughs> cracky method is just, you know, it's such a great uh, way to grow hydroponic, uh, you know, vegetables, even peppers, you know, uh, all kinds of stuff. But uh, it works the best for um, for growing a hydroponic vegetable because, you know, those vegetables, they don't take a long time to grow, like 30, 30 to 40 days you get to harvest it. So the uh, the cracky method is just a great way to grow it because, um, uh, you know, like plants like uh, uh, lettuce and stuff like that, they only need one gallon of water for the entire life cycle. And I've tested this. One lettuce plant will only use up one gallon of water. So all the water you save by growing in hydroponic. <laughs> so, yes, you can grow a lettuce plant. Um, you know, one gallon is, is the minimum, I would say, like two. Two gallons is great, but usually they, they won't drink they won't drink two gallons the entire thirty days. So um, grow lettuce first in hydroponic. If you have herbs like basil and stuff like that, they're great to grow in uh, in hydroponic. Uh, does peppers need to be pollinated? Yes, they do need to be pollinated, but they're self pollinators, so you don't need bugs or anything like that. The flowers itself has both male and female. The pollen will fall onto the uh, stigma. And it pollinates itself. All you need to do is shake the pepper plant. That's it. You don't need the bees. You don't need any of those stuff. So it does it on its own. Uh, let me see. Uh, my romaine lettuce seems to be taking longer. I'm using the NFT tower that I built. Uh, if your lettuce plant is taking longer than 30 days, uh, it could be because of many reasons. You know, lettuce plants really love the cooler months. So if you're growing it in, in the hot months, it's going to be a problem. Uh, lettuce don't like heat. So uh, a temperature below 70 degrees Fahrenheit is perfect. Uh, I would say the optimal temperature for lettuce is between 65 degrees Fahrenheit to 70. Uh, if it goes over 70, it's going to be a problem. Uh, lettuce just don't like it. Also, because if, the, if it's too hot, the lettuce is going to taste a little bitter. So if you if you have little uh, bitter lettuce pl uh, plants in your hydroponic system, it's because there's just too much heat. They they don't like heat. They're cool weather plants. Uh, let's see here. Um, Joaquim, <laughs> my friend, good to see you, buddy. Glad to have you here. Uh, let's see backyard tryouts. Can you transplant lettuce? from Aragorn to large container? Absolutely, yes, you can. Uh, lettuce are very easy. Uh, they, You can even yank it out, damage a lot of the roots and everything, and, and still the lettuce plant will live. All you have to do is pull off some of the leaves and uh, it'll grow right back. <laughs> lettuce are very, very tough. Uh, they, you know, um, when we touch the lettuce plant, they, they, you know, they seem fragile because they're really soft and stuff like that. But they are very hardy. That you can you can do so much to the plant and they will still live. Um, you can even like cut the plant in in half and it will sprout back. The... <laughs> yeah. So um, yep, you can you can transplant it if you want to. Just yank it out. Uh, just make sure that you have some roots uh, attached. Uh, how long does it take for my lemon starburst plants to flower? Uh, it depends. Uh, sometimes when you're growing it in the optimal condition, when the plant is nice and healthy and just growing strong and it keeps growing and keep growing, it could take up to four months before it starts to flower, four to five months. Uh, I would really recommend letting it flower at the five months mark because then it will grow to the full size that it needs to be. Uh, sometimes it can even fruit uh, earlier, you know, like four months when if you grow the, if you grow the plant in small pots. Um, pepper plants are very smart, guys. Uh, if you grow them in a small pot, the roots would would like kind of like grow down and kind of look for its way around. 
And when it know when it realizes that there's no more uh, room to grow, it starts to wrap. And when the roots start to wrap, it'll send signal to the plant to flower. So we, sometimes you get a small um, pepper plant that flower early. So that's because the pots are really small. Uh, Eric, uh, whenever I mix nutrients into the water in water in hydro, it seems that the nutrients settle at the bottom and not dissolve. Are you using the liquid kind or are you using the granular kind that you have to dissolve? Uh, if, if, if dissolving is a, a problem, I would suggest going with the liquid kind, like the Dynagro series where you just take five milliliter and you drop it in water, you mix it up, everything gets dispersed evenly, and then that's how you mix it. Uh, if you're using like stuff like the master blend where you have to mix the granular and it, it dissolve in the water, uh, that could be a challenge because some of those uh, grains of granular, they don't dissolve very well. And it does take a long time to stir. Um, and if even if then you still have uh, bits and uh, grains left, what you should do is uh, mix the, the liquid, mix, mix the nutrients in, in a warm glass of water first. Warm water would dissolve all of those granular very, very fast, and then you will have no problem with, uh, you know, those deposit at the bottom. Mm, Mark, uh, your plants are growing a ton. Okay, producing nicely. That's great. A about two gallons worth set sent out. That <laughs> that's amazing, Mark. That's great. I'm very happy. You know, anytime I I hear about success of. Uh, your plant, your plant producing, I'm happy for you. Because <laughs> sometimes, you know, you have a, a good year and the next year you may be struggling like crazy. So if you share your harvest with people, then the next year when you're uh, potentially, if you're struggling, somebody will send them back to you. <laughs> uh, Don, good to have you, Don. Mr. Don Pan, Pandemonia. Okay, uh, I have trimmed off branches of pepper plant sitting in water for weeks. It's still looking good, even seems to start growing roots. Any experience with that? Yes, I, I propagate pepper plants all the time in water. Uh, if it's starting to, uh, sometimes it takes, uh, you know, two weeks, sometimes it takes five weeks. So it depends, you know, and, uh, you know, propagating pepper is very easy. I've done it hundreds of times and it's great. Uh, once you get roots, I suggest you you feed the plant hydroponic solutions. Man, it will boost the root growth like crazy. Uh, let's see what else here. Uh, man, I think I'm missing a lot of questions. Uh, Daniel, uh, what do you recommend when seedlings, two or three sets of true leaves begin to drop for no reason? Uh, I, I believe if the leaves are dropping for no reason and the plant is only only has a two, two or three sets of leaves, it's probably because you water too much. Uh, the watering too much is always a big, big problem. Uh, if, if your soil is wet all the time, uh, the, the plant are not going to like it. It, it. it, you know, it does like water, but what, ha what it does is it like moisture in the soil, not wet standing water. You know, the, the same, the, the same thing as us, you know, we, we, sometimes when you go, uh, you go swimming, for example, and you stay in the water for too long, your skin is going to start to, to start to wrinkle. Right. So plants are very similar. They, they like water, but there's too much water that, that kind of effect will, you know, it will cause the plant problem. So what you should do is you always give the plant, uh, the pot, a thorough water, and then you don't water again until the plant, you know, the soil is semi-dry, and then you water again. That's the best way. If you water every single day, uh, you know, then the plant, basically the roots cannot breathe, and it's drowning in water, and then you're going to get uh, leaves to drop. And it does that, and then it, it, it can eventually die especially when the plants are like, you know, two or three sets of true leaves. Uh, is there such a thing as too large of a container to grow lettuce? Uh, Merlene, yes, it is. Uh, lettuce don't need that much space. 
And if you have a container that is too large, it's not a problem, but it's just a waste. So if you have a large container, then you should grow multiple lettuce. That way you can maximize the space and not waste anything. Uh, but uh, lettuce plants can grow in container size of like uh, three gallons uh, to five gallons. Even in the five gallons, you can even grow two lettuce plants if you want to. But yeah, three to five gallons will work. If you have such a big uh, uh, you know, pot, then maximize uh, your, your space by putting more plants. Lettuce, at, at least, if that, that's what you're asking. Uh, can you use water hydroxide mixed to clean seeds uh, with the mosaic? You know, I've heard people do that. They 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 use hydrogen peroxide um, to you know wash the seeds off, and I I have done that. I actually I do that every year. I just drop a few drops of uh, hydrogen peroxide in in my water, and then I drop the seeds in there, and I let it sit for like you know a few hours, and then take it out and put it in the soil. It it actually does uh, help to eliminate a lot of the bacteria that could be harmful to the seeds. Yes, so it is a good idea. <laughs> uh, Daydreamer, do you think it's too late to plant jalapenos and banana peppers in hydroponic? You know, the, the thing is, it depends. Again, uh, where are you going to grow the plant? Is it going to be inside? Is it going to be outside? Because uh, jalapenos and uh, banana peppers they need, you know, at least three to four months in hydroponics, sometimes even five months to grow fully and produce. And if you can provide an environment that is warm enough, you know, like anything be, be above 65 degrees Fahrenheit, you can plant it any time of the year. There's no such thing as too late. Uh, if you can provide the peppers with an environment that it can grow, you can grow it any time of the year. It doesn't matter. Um, I grow peppers all year because I have my air garden over there. So because inside my house is around 70, 71 to 73 degrees Fahrenheit, I grow it all year long. So I have peppers all the time. GTF. <laughs> Hello, my friend. Good to see you. Uh, Vic. Victor, do you need to pollinate pepper plants if you've grown in uh, one in the era garden? So I answered this question earlier. Uh, pepper plants are self-pollinators. They don't need another pepper plant to pollinate. They, they just pollinate themselves. So if you're grown in the era garden or, or anywhere inside, all you have to do is shake the plant when there's flowers. You just shake it and then the flower, the pollen would drop and it pollinates itself. So uh, they're self-pollinators. So you don't need to grow two plants. And... Um, that's it. No, you don't need the bees. You don't need any of those stuff. Just shake the plant in it. Sometimes it just does it on its own. <laughs> Jack, I just stopped stopping by to say hello. That's great. Uh, good, good to have you. And uh, goodbye if you're leaving. <laughs> have a good day. Uh, Kyle, what would you say is the best insects to buy for the greenhouse uh, to not use pesticides? Um, I, you know, it depends if you're having like a, a aphids or any other problem like that uh, in the greenhouse. I would I would go with uh, ladybugs or lace wings. La ladybugs and lace wings are the best two types of uh, insects that that you know, you can put in the greenhouse to uh, get rid of all of the pests like um, aphids. You know, guys, the, the thing is, you can actually prevent aphids from, you know, you can't prevent it completely, but you can reduce the chances of them coming into your garden and damaging your plants by not over fertilizing. So a lot of the times uh, you always get aphids is because you over fertilize your plants. When you over fertilize your plants, the soil, you know, it, it, it's just going to invite aphids because, uh, you know, overfeeding the plants cause a lot of problems. Like it, it, it caused the plant to stress. Uh, it caused the plant to become weak. So it can't deter the bugs on its own. So, you know, just fertilize it when it needs and give it a, a good soil mixture, a balanced soil mixture 
And a lot of the times the problem takes care of itself. Like um, uh, when I started growing peppers for the first time, and you know, I didn't know about fertilizing, over fertilizing, and I fertilize often. And man, aphids are just, there is madness in the garden. There's aphids all over the place. And then over the years, I, I started to do experiments and do things. And I, I put my plant on a schedule. I mix a good, um, you know, I, I, make, I made sure I mix a good mixture of soil for my, uh, my pots and stuff like that. And, um, and now I make compost and all that stuff that I grow, I use in the raised bed. And, you know, I don't have problem with aphids that much anymore. I mean, I still have them, but then there's other bugs that would come and eat them and uh, they just take care of themselves. So, you know, I don't even have to spray anymore. I would try hydro with avocados. Yes, I did. I started an avocado plant uh, from seed and I grew it in hydroponic. Man, it grew pretty fast, but it's, it's never going to make it because avocados will take years, like at least five to eight years before they would start to fruit. So it would be a waste of time for me. So I got rid of it. <laughs> but it was fun. It was fun to do. I also grew uh, uh, Asian pears in hydroponic. I have two pear trees that I started out in hydroponic. The pears now, uh, they're they're two years old now. I, I keep cutting and cutting. And so it's, it's really short. So um, yeah, it's cool. If, if, you, uh, if you're wanting to do uh, to learn how to grow fruit trees and stuff like that you can you can do it in hydroponic start them out and then grow them later and then you can experiment with trimming and grafting and all that stuff so it's a lot of fun uh okay let me see if i missed anything else Um, and the, the chat is scrolling fast for me. I, I think I need to use the slow down function. <laughs> uh, last Damer, uh, anyone grown cucumber hydroponically? Uh, mine all get yellow spots and die. I grow hydroponic cucumbers all the time. Uh, I, I've made a ton of videos on it too. So, uh, you know, check it out and see. Uh, the cucumbers are one of the easiest plants to grow in hydroponic. And um, it's very easy as well. You know, I, I usually uh, put, I don't even check pH. Uh, if you watch a few of my cucumber videos, all I do is uh, water and nutrients, and then it just grows. <laughs> I, didn't, I don't check pH or nothing. And um, I get a ton of fruits. They grow very fast in hydroponic. Uh, and I also grew some melons. Oh man, I grew some Japanese melons in hydroponic and they were the, probably the sweetest melon I've ever had, in, you know, ever. It was just so good. And so this winter time, I, I plan to do it again. Uh, how do you transfer from soil to hydroponic? I made many videos on this topic. You can check it out. Just browse my channel and see it's very, very easy. Uh, what is the best way to get rid of thrips? Uh, is it for inside plants or outside plants? Uh, you know, sometimes outside plants, it's, um, you know, I, I do, I think I have thrips on, a, on my outside plants, but they just, they just don't bother the plants at all. If you have it inside, it's a big problem. Uh, there's, there's certain sprays that you could buy. Uh, neem oil worked well, but you got to be careful when you use neem oil because uh, sometimes when you spray, Neem oil, you have to mix it with soap in order for it to stick to the leaves. And then you spray the plants all over the place, up, you know, underside. Uh, thrip, they usually hang around, you know, like the, ba the baby parts of the plants uh, and the flowers. So you make sure you have to spray and make contact with all parts of the plants. And then if it's an inside plant, I would take it outside and spray it outside. Uh, and then, you know, kind of rinse it off after a few hours. That way it doesn't damage the plant. And but you have to stay consistent. You can't just spray it uh, one time and then you stop because sometimes there's eggs that still have not hatched yet. And then um, 
you know, if you stop spraying and then the eggs hatch and then they start all over again. So when you anything with anything like aphids and thrips and stuff like that, uh, when you treat them, you have to you have to have a schedule like every three days, every three days for like, you know, a few treatments before you get rid of all of them. Uh, pajama girl, any, any tips for growing strawberries? I have nothing but leaves after two months. Uh, are you growing this in soil or in hydroponic? Uh, strawberries, you know, be patient because some strawberries will take two months, uh, to, uh, to grow. Um, once they get to the size where, uh, sometimes strawberries, they don't, uh, you know, if you buy the strawberries, uh, for the first year. Uh, sometimes they don't they don't produce that much in the first year. You have to kind of like keep going and get the the, the runners and then grow it again and um, uh, and 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 you would get more fruits the the second season. But you know if you live in in a cold place, they they probably die. Yeah, in containers, if it's two months already and it's still growing leaves and it looks it's looking healthy, uh, just let it continue to grow. The the plant is not ready to produce yet. Uh, let's see, Rex, do you do anything to waterproof your solar air pump? Uh, no, I do not. Uh, the, the pump that I use in the video, they are somewhat water resistant to a certain extent. Uh, there are times when I go out there and I open up the, um, the, the, uh, the, uh, the solar thing, <laughs> there's water in there. Uh, it, it, it does have this liner that would keep the water out. But if you have like super heavy rain, I would I suggest you know move the system or move the uh, the solar pump out outside of the rain because I've had rain that goes in there. But you know I open it up and I let it dry and it still works. Um, yeah, those things are really cool. <laughs> Sometimes I, I've had a few where it doesn't work and then I'll I'll you know you know you, you do the the old traditional tap and then it start to work. <laughs> Alan, hello, Alan. Good to have you, my friend. Uh, have you tried Coca Core for hydroponic? Uh, yes, I have. Uh, usually, I don't uh, use Coca Core. It's because I don't have it available, but I have used it. Um, if you if you're using Coca Core, make sure you soak it in pH balanced water for a while before you put it into your hydroponic. I think Coca Core has some kind of salt in it, so. Um, it, it does, it may affect your plants. But yeah, soak it in uh, pH water uh, before you start to use it for uh, hydroponic stuff. Uh, what is the best leafy green hydroponically in terms of yield and time? Uh, definitely lettuce. A uh, romaine lettuce is probably the best. Um, another one is, uh, pak choy. Have you ever grown pak choy? Oh man, those things grow super fast. They grow super huge and you get lots and lots of leaves. Uh, the thing with these leafy greens is, um, you don't have to harvest the entire plant right away. Uh, you can just cut around and cut the leaves and then you have a ton of leaves and then you just keep letting it grow. It grows right back. So you get a bunch of, bunch of harvest. So I've done a bunch of videos on lettuce where you cut and come again and literally you can just cut it and cut it and cut it and it, it'll just keep coming back. You know, you have a ton of leaves for a long time. So yeah, in terms of yield, uh, I would say lettuce, most varieties of lettuce, uh, like, um, uh, romaine lettuce for sure. And, uh, basically any kind of the, the leaf lettuce. Oh, okay. That's cool. Coca Core is what I use here in Finland. is already pH buffer. That's great. If you have a pH buffer Coca Core, yeah, great. That's uh, that's the that's the way to go. It's uh, uh, it's organic, so you can just throw it in your soil when uh, when you're done using with it, and then you know just it just break down. 
uh, you grow grapes for three years and uh, still no fruit. Uh, is it because you started from seeds? If you start the grape from seed, it does take a very long time. Sometimes, yeah, three years for sure. But if you buy grape, uh, you know, the grape branches, uh, sometimes you can buy them. They're already mature. That Those are probably like already three years. So when you grow them in your garden, they, they may possibly fruit the first year. Yeah, if you grow your grape from seeds, it's going to take a long time. Uh, Marlene, yes, uh, purple pak choy, they grow enormous. Another plant that would grow enormous is uh, the giant uh, the giant mustard plant. Oh, my goodness. I grew giant, giant mustard plants, and they just they got huge. Uh, I grow pak choy, tat soy. Tat soy is another great one in terms of yield. They, they produce so many leaves, and then you just have a ton of them. Uh, the plants with the lowest yield for hydroponic is spinach. Uh, I would not grow uh, hydroponic spinach because you're going to have to grow a bunch of plants to make up for the yield. If you just grow one or two plants, you get like a few leaves and that's it. <laughs> so, yeah, if you want a lot of leaves for spinach, make sure you grow a lot of them because they don't produce that many leaves. Aaron, Aaron Hernandez, good to have you here, my friend. Uh, you can buy triple wash cocoa core perlite mix. That way it's easy to use. Good point. That's a great point. Uh, triple wash cocoa core is great. Yeah, I, I think in, in uh, there's some some cocoa core that you buy, uh, they're not triple washed or whatever, and it could have a you know like a salt in there, and that would could that could alter your your hydroponic solutions like pH and stuff like that. So uh, yeah, if you if you if they if they triple wash or have whatever they say pH buffer or whatever, then those are probably the best to use. Simple tech. Uh, follow all of your advice on pepper plant. Totally awesome. Love the hydro. <laughs> That's great. Yeah, I'm I'm glad it worked for you. <laughs> Can you go hydroponic with direct sunlight? What can you go hydroponic with direct sunlight? Yes, of course. I, I do it all the time. Uh, uh, direct sunlight. I use hydroponic uh, outside with a solar pump, and I, I grow I grow plants all summer. Uh, so direct sunlight will work. Uh, depends on the plants, also. You know, definitely you cannot grow lettuce in direct sunlight in the summertime because lettuce are cool weather plants. So uh, just Pick the right plant and you can use direct sunlight. Hydro versus uh, soil for flavor. I'm telling you guys, there's no difference. Uh, sometimes the hydroponic plants would taste even better. Uh, for example, my hydroponic tomato, same exact variety, seed from the same uh, tomato that I grew, and my hydroponic tomato tastes a lot sweeter, a lot crunchier, and much more flavor than the one in soil. I don't know. I've done many hydro and soil tests, and uh, if you can tell the difference, then your taste bud is amazing. There, there's, there's, sometimes you cannot tell at all. So, you know, uh, those that are um, reluctant to start hydroponic, th it, they have changed so much over the years. Hydroponic tastes exactly like the soil one. There's no way you can tell. Uh, if you grow hydroponic uh, peppers, they taste even hotter than the soil one. <laughs> and I've tried this so many times. It is way hotter in hydroponic. Uh, can I use aquarium water for hydroponic? Uh, definitely no. <laughs> because anytime you add organic matters, you know, uh, that type of bacteria and stuff like that from your aquarium water and the water may become you know spoiled or stagnant or whatever and it's going to cause a bad smell that's why you cannot use uh um what was it uh people were asking about using hot 
you know, uh, like worm castings or worm tea in hydroponic and stuff like that. No, it's a bad idea. Don't do it. There are, however, some hydroponic solutions that are that are listed as as organic. Uh, those you can use, <laughs> but but don't don't use aquarium water. Don't use uh, worm tea in your hydroponic system. They're, they're not going to work. Uh, what is the best method to store seeds uh, to last a very long time? Uh, you have to keep it dry, very dry, and you can you can freeze it. But um, again, you have to suck all of the moisture out of it and then uh, and then freeze it. Uh, usually, what I do is I, I keep my my seeds in a bag, like a Ziploc bag, the mini Ziploc bag, and uh, those will last easily three years. So, I mean, if, if you if you want to keep it for longer than that, you're going to have to put it into a dry, like, like the seed bank. The seed banks, you know, they, they keep it for a long time and it's a, it's in very, very cold temperature. And uh, the a way for them to do that is they, they, they have to keep the moisture out. It has to be very dry. You can't wet dry, you know, wet freeze it. You have to, you know, dry freeze it. And then those will last a long time. Aim game, trying to make a cross uh, like the lemon starburst pepper. Great, uh, I, I highly recommend it. Uh, if you can make your own cross, it's it's one of the best thing to to do as a as a gardener because uh, you're going to be very proud of it. It's going to be your own variety, and you can give it your own name. <laughs> so it, it's it's very you know rewarding. Uh, it's going to be a lot of work to stabilize it but it's going to be worth it. So if, if you are interested in it, definitely go for it. Nikolai from Bulgaria. Hello, my friend. Thanks for joining me. Oh, yeah, jo uh, Jolie Light. Uh, uh, for someone that was asking about aquarium water for hydro, uh, jo Jolie just mentioned aquaponic. Yes, aquaponic is, is a good way to do that. Uh, you can use uh, fish in combination of plants where the water cycles down into the, you know, and then it cleans it off and it repeats itself. Uh, the pro I think one of the problem with hydro uh, aquaponic is that sometimes you may have to supplement a certain uh, nutrients in order to have it complete. But yeah, people have done aquaponic for a long time, and it, it uh, there's there's a few really good aquaponic channels on YouTube. If you guys are interested, um, I think uh, there uh, there's so many, and they so they they'll show you exactly what to do and how to start it up. Aquaponic is a very expensive system to start up, but when you can get it running, then it becomes cheaper. But to start it up, it's going to be very expensive. And that, that is the reason why people don't go aquaponic because the startup cost is just too much for someone that are just doing it for, um, you know, like just for fun. Uh, let's see, Team Optimal, Kang, if you grow using Cracky Method, how and when would you top off the water level to keep the plant growing longer? Uh, you can top up, depends on your the size of your system. So again, in 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 cracky system, um, so what happens is at, as a baby plant, you can submerge the root underwater completely and it's fine. So as the plant grow, it'll drink the water and leaving the air gap, right? And the, the gap gets lower and it gets lower and it gets lower. And this area is where the, the plants start to sprout air roots. So if it drinks down to here, and when you want to top it off, you got to top it off just to here. Don't top it off to here because you're going to drown the plant. So you got to you got to time it exactly where uh, the, the last place of your nutrients is and go a little bit above. Don't don't drown the air roots. Uh, you can tell the air roots because if you look at the root, it has little fuzzes on them. So don't cover that section and you should you should be OK. Um, uh, 
I'm trying to scroll up to see if I missed anything. Wow, we have uh, 70 people watching. Thank you, guys. Thanks, everyone, for joining me. Um, yeah, so again, uh, for those that have missed uh, earlier, I just started um, a new project. I'm growing Armenian cucumbers in my hydroponic system right now. So I'm going to do an update uh, once, once it's ready. <laughs> It's the first time I'm growing Armenian cucumbers in hydroponic. I'm not sure it's going to work or not. Uh, it may take a lot of work because I have, to, I have to hand pollinate those cucumbers. Uh, simple tech. My ghost pepper takes uh, long to grow big. Uh, how long does it take? Is it? You, are you asking about the pod, the pod size? Like how long does it take from a baby pod to a large size or a baby plant? Uh, Daydreamer, uh, do you plan on making a Discord? Uh, there is already a Discord um, uh, group going for, uh, for Pepper Lovers. So if you can go join there, um, you can talk to a lot of people. Uh, Ghost Pepper, they they will probably take about three three to four weeks before they get to a size that uh, are big. Uh, you know, it, it, sometimes it just it just takes that long. Uh, I'm, I'm still waiting for my... Um, uh, habanero to uh, to <laughs> to ripen up. It's been a few weeks now. Yeah, it, it does take a long time, but be patient. You, ghost peppers are great. They uh, they produce a lot. They're very easy to grow too. For a super hot ghost, is one of the easiest plants to grow. Um, I I don't like them too much uh, as a raw pod because they have a very a floral flavor to them. You know, like perfume. And that's what I get when I eat a red ghost. They're very perfumey or, or floral. So I love drying the, drying the peppers up and then put them, make them as a powder. And then I put it on my pizzas and all that stuff. Man, it's so good. <laughs> uh, can you overwinter your plant in a cracky uh, system? Yes, you can. Uh, again, cracky system is a lot of work. Uh, if you're growing uh, plants are, that are going to grow for longer than 30 days, because you're going to have to keep topping off, and then you, occasion, then you got to change out the nutrients, and you know you got to maintain it, you got to watch for it, make sure that the level is correct. So um, yeah, you can, but it's going to be a lot of work. Uh, if I were to overwinter my pepper plants. I would do it in soil because uh, they don't need a lot of water in the in the winter time, and you can trim it back to keep them small, and that way they don't take up a lot of space, and uh, it's just it requires very little work. Just I probably when you know when I overwinter pepper plants, I probably water them like once every month maybe, because they they don't need that much. It, it's just so cold that they just don't grow. And then the you know you water one time and it, and you're good for like another month. Yeah, uh, the PLC Discord is a great place uh, to chat with people with similar interests. So if you guys love hot peppers, definitely go to uh, the PLC Discord. Uh, Jesse's on there. He's amazing. He's he's really good 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 guy to talk to. And I think he started up the group there. And uh, he's running it nicely. I, I, I drop by every once in a while. Uh, where can I find the link? Uh, let me see if I can find it for you. I'm not. Uh, I think I have it somewhere. Uh, here you go. I think this is it right here. You can check on there. That's the Discord for um, Pepper Lovers.
Yep, that's it. Chris. <laughs> Good to have you, Chris. Uh, yes, guys, I, I, I did made a video recently uh, discussing the uh, Arrow Garden unit and the MTN growth stations. And uh, Chris, right here, Chris Christopher Bransaw, he's the one that created the system. Very, very nice system. Uh, I'm still growing it, and uh, I'm growing it right now. I wish I could turn the, the thing over there and show you guys. But my pepper plants are just doing amazing. I, I'm growing white Thai pepper in my uh, MTN growth station. And uh, there's lots and lots of fruits right now. Uh, the reason I'm growing it in there is because just in case winter time comes and I don't have any peppers to use, then I have uh, the, that station over there that's growing um, <laughs> the white tie that we can use. Chris, how, how was your vacation? Man, that picture you showed us was amazing. It's like a little island on, on a lake. Uh, yes, Ben, you can definitely grow Rao Mong Thai in hydroponic. It's, uh, uh, and, and I have grown it before. Those things grow so much. They grow like crazy. Uh, but the thing is they love uh, a lot of heat, so they don't do too well in the cold weather. So right now is the best time to grow them. Um, they grow very fast in hydroponic and the leaves are like massive. You know, maybe I should do a video on that. How to grow, um, uh, what do they call? <laughs> That's the English name for it. Uh, I forgot. Some kind of spinach. You know what? You, you probably, you just gave me a, a good idea because I just got some really, some new seeds from uh, um, my buddy Vincent. And uh, I think I'm going to do it. I'm going to grow um, a Malabar spinach in hydroponic. <laughs> I think I'm going to start seeds tonight just because you, you mentioned it. That's going to be a good one. I'm going to document it for you. <laughs> that way you can see how well it grows. Uh, ben, I have a lot of them grown right now in the garden. They just grow everywhere. So last year I have um, the uh, one Malabar spinach plant, the green, the green variety. And it produced so much seeds that I didn't collect. I just forgot to collect the seeds, or I guess I didn't care to collect seeds. And the seeds just drop everywhere. And now I, I like have like Malabar spinach microgreens. I just go out there and cut the little baby greens and you can eat them that way. They're, they're actually pretty good. I have them grown everywhere. So guys, uh, another plants that are really good to grow since we're on the topic is Malabar spinach. They love the summer heat. They just love heat. So if, if you love spinach and you can't grow the actual spinach because it's summertime, try Malabar spinach. They grow like crazy in the summertime, especially when it's really hot. Team Optimal, thank you for the feedback. <laughs> I'm glad you find uh, some of the videos helpful. <laughs> Nicola, are you keeping away the kids from the hot peppers in a way? You know, um, a good way to, uh, to keep the kids away from the pepper plants is I take them out there with me when I when I work in the garden and uh, I tell them how spicy this is. This is spicy. This is spicy. Don't touch this or you can touch it. Just don't eat it. <laughs> and, uh, you know, just keep repeating it after a while. They uh, they just listen and they'll tell it to you. You know, daddy, that's spicy. <laughs> Oh man, the ba my baby is awake. See, he's calling for me. <laughs> so anyway, guys, uh, I'm glad to have you here on the Sunday afternoon. I have to get going now because the the baby is awake, so I gotta go get him. Um, uh, Chris, I'll, I'll get you the Discord uh, in a bit. Um, 
show you where the Pepper Lovers uh, Discord is. But uh, anyway, everyone, thank you so much for joining me. I have to get going. Maybe we'll do this again next week. So uh, have a great rest of the weekend, y'all.